This press conference was a complete and total utter mess. Um, I saw the whole press conference, complete mess, total, utter mess. And there are no, there's many different things that you could you could take for, from it, that it's fine. But this is the one that's been doing the rounds. And I want to just study this because I think this is a study into body language, response, and reading between the lines. Even when you just look at the guy's face, you could just see that, uh, yeah, yeah. So we're going to be playing it, pausing it, playing it, pausing it, and just studying um a man that is under pressure and a man that is just um completely and totally and utterly delusional man so let's 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 ride with this man so let's just ride i wanted to ask a question about petta um at, at a time like this when confidence seems to be low in the squad and lots of players individually seem to be struggling and you know he sort of did this a lot during the whole thing where he just sort of would have because you could just see from his face and so forth because this is of this was i think the third fourth fifth question like where he just stands up goes like that you can see he's he's not comfortable you can see he isn't comfortable and he's not comfortable with the questions because for the first time in your life people are really questioning your quality for the first time specifically homeboy but, but we'll see but you could just see already that he's uncomfortable with the question and is and he can already see this as an attack how valuable is it to have someone else around the first team who like you has a very similar had a similar winning mentality as a player and similar experience of good and bad times at the very top level um well to be fair Liam, i think if their confidence would be shot if they were to read some of the pieces that you write at the minute because Okay. All right. Let me, let me, let me. So their confidence is no, not because they don't know what the heck they are, they are doing or what they're doing the pitch. Their confidence is low because of what people write. So as a professional player, my confidence is low because of what a journalist writes. And I'm like, oh man, the journalist says we're doing so bad. Oh, but my confidence isn't all because I'm not playing. I'm playing out of position. We are losing. And I have no idea what we're doing on the pitch. So so, so, so now you're now attacking the media who have pretty much been on your side and giving you a, a, a good role. I digress. We continue. Um, I read some of them and some of the, the confirmation bias that you, you always reflect on games with. And um, it's like a sort of almost like a social media pundit to, to try and get a reaction in a negative way. Social media pundit. Me. Um, Robbie. CFC Don. Um, um, what's it called? Alex Goldberg. Nini. Um, Deluded Guna. I could just name all of these guys who have gotten really big through social media. I think the biggest Chelsea one, I think, is CFC Don, I, th I think, or something like that, who is obviously really known. So you have just called a journalist who has gone to school, done everything like that, a social media pundit, which is, of course, you're literally insulting a man's in integrity and, in and insulting his, his journalism. That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, yeah, you're attacking guys like me. You're attacking guys like CFC Don. You're attacking guys like Nini um, Sports. You're attacking all of these guys on social media who I think have a right to have a footballing opinion. And all because a footballing opinion says that you're trash or what you're doing is stupid, you demean it. Aha, but if it's your cousin... If it's your cousin, Jamie Redknapp, on Sky Sports, he's, he's good. If it's all of these guys on Sky Sports and, and so forth who have come out to de defend you, they're fine. But the streets, the streets, which is, which is all of us, us, us regular folk, the, 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 the streets, oh, who are we? Because you're lumping your boy Liam, this Liam Tiny dude, to the streets. So, sorry, let's continue. 
I read the pieces when we were doing well as well, and they, they didn't go both ways. So I think for a journalist to be objective um, would be a big start because if players do read it, I'd feel like that. So when a guy is being negative, he's not being objective. But when he's being supportive, he's being objective. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. You can be objective while supporting someone and criticizing someone. And I think I sort of got a hold of some of the things that Homeboy said. Um, and sorry, 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 because I want to get, get the right name. So Liam Toomey, that's his name, Liam Toomey. Um, because see, this just shows because it is such a, a because even when Liam, even Liam Toomey had a, because I'll probably get to his um, re re response, he had a very diplomatic response, which we will get into because the attack on a journalist's credibility is nonsensical. This attack is nonsensical, and I think this right here, which is obviously which is obviously doing the rounds, this is what people will say. You're clueless, and you've already. This is confirmation that you've lost the red restroom. But I digress. But him saying that it's that that you're not being objective, based on what? Based on how do you know he's not being objective? If he's not being objective, what does Liam to me who? I would assume is it the English or British, and we know that the, it's the English media who have been against. Um, who, sorry, it's been the, it's been the English media who've been for Lampard, and it's been social media who's been mostly against him. What beef does he have against you? Now, someone like me and everything, okay, you can say, or someone like CFT done, or someone, or, or like Nini Sports, fine. But what does a Liam guy who? He, okay, maybe I'm a sports team and everything, but your life is you're a, you're a journalist. That's what, what you do. And from journalism school and so forth, again, from, from even me as well, who I, I work past time in a foreign news channel, you, 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 what you're told, what is ingrained into you is objectivity. Objectivity, objectivity, objectivity. Remove all subjectivity from it because you are prided on you have written a objective article where you look at both sides. Let's continue. In terms of Pete, I think his, um, his experience is vital, vital for the club that we use our experiences because even in years that we were successful and, and we look back and we're holding trophies, there were tough moments in them, tough moments to whatever degree and there's some really solid squads in those years as well. So we've been there before. We know what it takes to, to turn the corner. So we work together on that. James. Sorry, I'll say it again. I was freaking muted. Why, why the hell was I muted? I'll say it again. Sorry, guys. I'll say it again. So, Liam Tooney says, I'm reluctant to respond at all because I'm really not important to what's happening at Chelsea. Certainly not enough to be discussed in the press. But I'll just say I respectfully disagree with Lampert's opinion of my objectivity. Good or bad, it's never personal. 100%. 100, 100 freaking percent. Because... Why would Liam Toomey have anything against Lampard? This just shows how how delusional this dude is. And anybody anybody that defends Lampard in that instance, I just know that you're a moron and you're just fully, fully bad. Because there is no reason why Liam Toomey, who's just a freaking journalist, would have any kind of personal beef with Frank Lampard. He's just looking at things objectively and just say, 
objectively, this is because, and that's when we get to another thing. If anybody's been truthful, it's trash. It's trash. Anybody with a brain knows that Chelsea and the situation that they're in and Lampard's tactics is completely utter, utter trash. It's it's garbage. It's a total mess. It's a, it's a total free freaking mess. Um, but just even looking at that press conference overall, man, um, it was it was a mess because you just saw a guy that was very bitey, um, agitated, and you could see there was, there was an attitude. You, he, had, he, had, he had an attitude, you know, and you could just see that he just wa- he wanted just to get this through as much as possible. So, you see, people need to un- separate the player from the person because we're not, we're not dealing with Frank Lampard, the person. I keep hearing this crap about, oh, he's a legend, he's a legend, he's a legend. Shut, shut up. This is now life now. This is now who are you as a guy and as a person. Forget who, who you are as, as, as a player. That, that, that is irrelevant. Who are you as a person? How do you deal with... Because you know what a person is like when things don't go well, when things are going badly. Do you take the blame, shoulder the blame and say, I messed up, I'll do better, I'll be better, I'll improve? Or do you be like, no, it's not my fault. No, 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 it's his fault. Excuse, excuse, excuse. Push blame, push blame, push blame, push blame, push blame. Because for the players right now, they're saying that, man, this dude really never takes the blame for himself. He never even puts himself, not, not once did he say, yeah, my my bad. Yeah, you know, I messed up there. It's always, eh, the, the players are not running enough. They're not trying hard enough. They're not putting enough of an effort. After all, players will be like, man, screw, screw this dude. Screw this dude. Because what a lot of managers do is come for me. Forget the players, come for me. It's, it's on me. Don't look at the players. Don't put any players out. Come for me. Come for me. But we're, we're dealing with a guy who's inexperienced. <laughs> and we're, de- we're dealing with a guy who is delusional to the fact that he's inexperienced because he's got um, delusions of grandeur. He's got, he's got delusions of grandeur. So, um, but yeah, that press conference was just a mess. And I think you're just looking at a guy who has just lost it completely. You know, Um and it's something that I may do like another video on. I'll talk about it in much more detail because it's just focusing on, on the press conference. Because I've already I, I put this out on Twitter. Mutiny. I think that the players should should mutiny and I think the players should re- re- revolt. As it is, it comes to the point where just get get him out and the players should just say, All right, look, split the dressing room. If you for for Lampard, good. If you're against him, you're against him. Mutiny. So what they did to Mourinho. And I didn't, I didn't like it because, you know, I'm a Mourinho guy, but it's what it was. For me, it's just as, I don't know whether there are any personalities here to do that. But if it's me, mutiny. Because this guy ain't for you. This, you're dealing with a guy who is ready to throw you guys under the bus. He will not, he, he will not take the blame. He will always, he will always shove you into the, the fire before he, he does. You know, so you're dealing with a guy who is a poor leader. Extremely arrogant extremely up his own ass <laughs> you know you know and a man who see you can be arrogant but you've got to be good you can call pep is arrogant and so forth he's a he's a damn good coach and he can show you the trophies to prove it Mourinho is extremely arrogant he's a damn good coach and he can show you the, the, the trophies to, to, to prove it who the hell are you who like flat lampard who as a manager who are you <laughs> as a player oh cool cool as a manager, who are you? You're a nobody. As a manager, you are literally a nobody. And I know that that's may harm your feelings because nobody ever see nobody's ever been this honest with you. Nobody's ever been this real with you because people always said, "Oh, you're amazing. You're amazing. You're a legend." But this is me. This is a church. Okay, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't give a crap what she did as a player. I, I, I couldn't give a crap because for me, Chelsea is bigger than any one player. Real. In sorts, Real Madrid only wants it. Sorts, Paris only want That is one thing I admire about Real Madrid. Real Madrid are like, nobody's bigger than this institution. Nobody's bigger than this club. This club will always come, come first. And Lampard needs to know that. I don't give a crap what you did here because you were, you, were, you, were, you were a freaking employee who got paid handsomely. Okay, you got paid very well to kick a ball around. All right? Paid a lot more than a lot of regular people. And you should feel privileged that you had a talent to get paid that much. But you were a freaking employee who got paid handsomely to, to do a freaking job. 
Now you're on here as a, as a manager and you're messing up in your job, which means that you should be properly criticized for messing up at this particular vocation. You're not playing, you're managing. So we're judging you on managing. More to follow. Like, subscribe. Become a Football Hot member and gain access to cool emojis on the live streams and get access to new YouTube content by clicking the join button here. And to view that new content, crack, head over to the YouTube channel homepage and click on the community tab over here.